couple of years ago, Dark Horse Comics gave manga collectors and readers in the US a really awesome surprise when they announced that they were going to be doing deluxe edition hardcover volumes for Kentaro Miura's legendary manga series, Berserk. Now, this was a surprise because before this, when readers and fans had asked Dark Horse about it, they always declined any plans to do something like this. Luckily, though, that wasn't true, and we got these beautiful hardcover editions, three-in-ones with the faux leather cover, beautiful embossing on the cover and spine for $50 each, which is only $5 less than the price that you would pay for the much smaller paperback editions. Plus, and my favorite part, the trim size is pretty much the same trim as a Western hardcover is of a Western comic like Hellboy or something like that would be, which means you get beautifully oversized pages to look at all of Muir's artwork on. Now, not long after the first volume or two of this was released, people had been asking what their plans were going to be if they were going to do more of these hardcover lines for different manga. And it wasn't too much later that Dark Horse answered the question and revealed to us that they were also going to do the same thing for Helsing, which was perfect because the Helsing paperbacks had been pretty long out of print, at least for most of them. They'd been out of print and harder to find. And this was also a good one because it's only a 10 volume finished series, so it's a lot easier for people to commit to buying into a three volume hardcover set rather than an ongoing set like uh, Berserk, which is going to be 13 volumes before we even get caught up to what we have released in the English right now. So after this, they very soon also announced their third title to get the hardcover deluxe treatment, Blade of the Immortal. Hiroaki Samura's classic series is another one that has beautiful artwork that is really benefited by the extra page size. And as well, this is something where even though the paperback omnibus edition line had just wrapped up, a lot of those paperback omnibus editions were starting to get rather hard to find. So releasing these beautiful hardcovers was something that allowed the series to become easier to get for many people who weren't able to pick up the paperback editions. So the question since then, since we got the announcement of that third series, was what would be coming next? What plans would Dark Horse have for any future titles that might get that deluxe edition treatment? That's the question that I'm hoping to give some answers to, if not just give my own personal ideas on what Dark Horse manga I think deserve the hardcover treatment. So stay tuned as I talk about 10 different Dark Horse manga that I think deserve the deluxe hardcover treatment. <laughs> Before I get to today's topic, I wanted to thank the sponsor of this video, Glocasant. Now, this product is one that I loved so much that immediately after I purchased it, I reached out to Glocasant to ask if I could do an ad for them. I'm sure I'm not in the minority here as someone who enjoys reading in bed at night before I go to sleep. And if you're like me, sometimes it can be hard to find a comfortable position to read in where your lamp properly illuminates the pages of your book. I wanted to find a product that could help me read comfortably without having to fork over a lot of cash for a floor lamp with an adjustable neck that I honestly don't have room for in here. Fortunately, I found this game-changing product. This neck light does absolutely everything I knew I was looking for and more. It has adjustable antenna on either side so you can make sure to cover the page with light in whatever position you want to relax in. There are multiple brightness levels and you can even change the co color of the light between white, blue, and amber so you can use whatever is most comfortable for your eyes. Plus, it's rechargeable so you don't have to worry about changing the batteries. I really love this product and it's something I really wanted to show you all because I feel like a lot of you can get great use from it just like I have been. I've put a link in the description below if you want to check it out and purchase one for yourself. I only promote products that I personally stand by, so thanks again to Glocasent for sponsoring this video. Their support and yours helps me to continue to grow this channel. Now without further ado, let's get to the video. So I've got a list of 10 different titles that I think, for one reason or another, deserve the hardcover treatment. Now, these are going to mostly be based on my own personal bias as far as my feelings on the artwork and the story and all of that good stuff, but there are other factors that are going to come into play on these as well, including some titles that are not ones that have any significance to me, but do have cultural significance, which is why they've made it onto this list. 
So I'm gonna start off with my number 10, which is kind of cheating because I have three different entries on number 10 on my list because they have one major thing in common. All three of these titles were never fully released in English. All three of those titles were started, canceled, and then we never saw anything from them again. Now, the three that I have are Eden, It's an Endless World, the sci-fi series that lasted for 14 out of the 18 total volumes in the US before it was canceled. So this would take six hardcovers to cover. As well, we have Kurosagi Corp's Delivery Service, which is actually still ongoing in Japan. The first 14 volumes were released in English, and a fifth omnibus that would contain up to volume 15 was solicited, but then canceled and never released. So this would take at least nine volumes to get caught up to where they are in Japan currently. And the final is MPD Psycho, which was a 23 volume series, so it would take seven or eight volumes to collect entirely in the hardcover format. We only got the first 11 of those 23 volumes released in English. Now, I haven't read these, but these are titles that a lot of people have told me are so great. And there's a lot of people that are always talking about that they're disappointed in why these series got canceled in English and never finished by Dark Horse. Now, I did solicit some information, some opinion from someone about one of these titles, MPD Psycho. So I'm gonna read that to kind of give an idea from their perspective of why this series is so great. The series is about a former detective who snapped during an investigation and developed multiple personalities. During his snap, he murdered a serial killer and was convicted for it. And the book starts as he's getting out of prison and into a private investigation slash consulting business with a partner. There seems to be another strange string of serial killings, but by multiple serial killers, all intertwined by one thread of evidence. This parallels his own sense of reality, given that we watch him morph between all his intertwined personalities throughout the investigation. I think this series should get a hardcover release because I was immediately hooked in, and while it can sometimes be hard to keep track of all the personalities and memories that come up, I find it that much more rewarding when you piece things together. It's a book that throws a ton of puzzle pieces about the serial killings to the main character to fit together, and you as the reader are putting those all together as well. The art can be quite grotesque, but has very clean lines, and that just makes it that much more real feeling. I wouldn't call the art super detailed, there's lots of blank white spaces, but in this book, you really want the characters to be the focus, and I think this excels at that. So I was able to get that information from someone, and that just made me really want this series that much more, and so I hope that maybe somewhere Dark Horse would have some plans to give us an awesome physical release of the rest of this title. Number nine comes from the creator Kota Hirano, who already has their series Helsing in the hardcover editions, and that is Drifters. Now, Drifters is still ongoing in Japan, and we have six volumes released so far that are also available in English. But just like Helsing, a lot of those hardcovers are really hard to find for a really good price. So it'd be awesome for Dark Horse to consider releasing the series across hardcover. The only thing is that it is still ongoing. I feel like they might want to wait until the series is concluded before they start releasing these hardcover volumes. I don't enjoy it nearly as much as I do Helsing, and that might be my personal bias because of how I felt about it reading it back when I was in high school, but I feel like Drifters has that awesome artwork from Kota Hirano that would look great on the oversized pages, just like his work in Helsing does. And again, that it's very hard to find some of these volumes, It'd be a really smart move on Dark Horse's part to capitalize on their hardcover treatments and give this one of those as well. Number eight on my list is a newer title, and that's I Am a Hero. Now, this title concluded in the US. Uh, volume 11 of the two-in-one paperback editions was released about a couple years back or something like that, and I really enjoyed this series. It commonly gets called the Japanese version or the manga version of The Walking Dead, and while I can see the comparison in that it is a long-form zombie story. I feel like this, in my opinion, is a better zombie story than The Walking Dead is, because it does a lot more to stay more focused on its storyline and not constantly expand what's going on, expanding the universe and stuff in kind of hokey ways, if I'm being honest at some times. Um, keeps very focused on a small group of characters instead. It also has very beautiful and detailed artwork and a really creative vision at the idea of zombies in this universe as well that I really enjoyed. Now, this was 22 volumes total, which means that they could wrap up in seven hardcover volumes if the first one or one of the volumes in there is four in one. And I think it'd be really awesome because some of these paperbacks are getting pretty hard to find 
And again, the detailed artwork is some work that would look really great on those oversized pages. The next one on my list is a little bit different, but this is the HP Lovecraft work of Gotenabe. Now, Gotenabe has been doing a lot of HP Lovecraft related work in Japan over the years, and most of it's not available in English, but from Dark Horse, we have gotten three paperbacks. This first one that I showed, The Hound and Other Tales, is a collection of short stories. And then we have the two volume adaptation of At the Mountains of Madness. Now, these are really great adaptations of these horror stories, but the best part about this is Gotenabe's beautiful artwork, which of all the books that I'm mentioning in this list, I think is probably the best and most detailed artwork that without a doubt deserves to be on as big of pages as you can get it. Now, these stories are all pretty much disconnected from one another, and while we haven't seen any additional H.P. Lovecraft material published in English by Dark Horse or otherwise, I think that it's still a good idea for them to do this because that they're so disconnected, you can put out one hardcover and then it doesn't have to have a sequel, it doesn't have to have a second part of this Tanabe Lovecraft library for years to come, making it a really easy decision for people to jump into when you know that you're only going to be picking up one of these hardcovers maybe every two years or something like that. My primary hope is that Dark Horse does start publishing more of Gotenabe's work in English, uh, but it would be amazing to see his detailed and beautiful and haunting artwork on oversized hardcover pages. Next is another classic, and I think that this series is a lot more well known by the Korean film adaptation, and that's Old Boy. Now, Old Boy, the manga consists of eight volumes, which means that we could see it in three or possibly two hardcover volumes. This one, just like many of the others on this list, I mentioned because it's gone out of print and is very hard to find the physical editions of. This is one where the title itself is gonna grab the attention from people who, as I mentioned, might be familiar with the film adaptation ahead of the manga itself. I would love to see this put together. There's some beautiful work. It's an amazing storyline, and it would be great to have this manga available for people to buy readily again, as it has not been for years. Now we're in the top half of the list now with number five, and here I put Astro Boy, the classic adventure action comic by Osamu Tezuka. Now, Tezuka's legendary series has been printed in multiple different formats from Dark Horse over the years, and while I don't think that necessarily it needs to have the deluxe hardcover treatment, I think that it would be something that just like Old Boy, the title itself is so influential that a lot of people who are not even big manga readers would wind up picking this up. This would be something that would undoubtedly sell well, sell very well for Dark Horse. Now, in total, this could take seven or eight volumes, so it would be a longer set, but it would be beautiful to have such a concise library of the Astro Boy content in such nice editions. For me personally, I haven't read much of the Astro Boy manga, but one of my favorite manga of all time is Pluto, which is a Naoki Urasawa adaptation of an Astro Boy story, and I would love to have the original series in beautiful editions sitting on the shelf next to my editions of Pluto. Number four is a series that I kind of forgot Dark Horse had the rights to to begin with, and that's Planets. Now, Planets is a really great sci-fi drama series from Makoto Yukimura, who is the creator behind the currently ongoing Vinland Saga, which I listed on my top 10 favorite ongoing manga video. Planets is a much more subdued story as it focuses on a couple of characters and their relationships as they develop in their life towards their own goals and towards each other's goals, more or less, without spoiling anything. Now, this was originally released across five volumes by Tokyo Pop, and as Tokyo Pop has more or less gone defunct and these volumes went out of print and were unavailable for years, Dark Horse swooped up the rights and reprinted across two omnibus editions. Now, they could do the same and just do a direct copy of those uh, paperback omnibus editions into the hardcover editions, or they could give us the biggest hardcover that we've seen in one single five-in-one hardcover volume. Whatever they do, I would love to see Planets translated into the hardcovers, because I do think that this series deserves a treatment due to the nature of its beautiful story, as well as having such amazing and detailed artwork. Number three has a lot of honorable mentions packed in with it. Dark Horse has done a really wonderful job of releasing many of Kazuo Koike's works over the years. And I would say that 
All in all, I think that pretty much every work that he does deserves some nice treatment in some way, especially since many of his titles have gone out of print and are very hard to find. Now, I, I feel like there could be various hardcover editions for all these different series, so I'm just going to kind of rattle them off before I get to the actual number three on my list. We could have a single volume for Lady Snowblood, three volume set for Crying Freeman, we could have a six or seven volume set for the series Path of the Assassin, a three volume set for Samurai Executioner, and then we get to the focal point of my number three on this list, and that is, of course, Lone Wolf and Cub. Now, I've personally read a decent chunk of Lone Wolf and Cub, and a lot of people might be upset to know that it's not my favorite thing in the world. I was not completely drawn in by the story, but I do recognize the cultural significance through the manga and through its adaptations. I do believe that this is, without a doubt, going to be done in hardcover edition. There's no doubt about that, that whether or not it was on my list, it's going to happen. I think this is probably the number one most likely to happen, even though it's not the number one most wanted in my perspective. Now, they did release the thick omnibus edition paperbacks not too long ago, but many of those are very hard to find, just like a lot of the titles on this list, because it seems like Dark Horse has trouble keeping their stuff in print. But if they wanted to re-release this in these nice three-in-one hardcover editions, they could do both Lone Wolf and Cub and the direct sequel Shin Lone Wolf and Cub, or New Lone Wolf and Cub as they translated it, across nine volumes for the original and then three more volumes for the sequel series. Like I said, this one I think is just undoubtedly going to happen at some point in the not too distant future. I wouldn't be surprised if this is the fourth series that Dark Horse gives the hardcover treatment. But the top two for me are different titles than this. My number two goes to the series Gantz. Gantz is also currently getting a paperback release of three in ones, which was perfect because, like I've said multiple times, this is another series that has gone out of print and become very hard to find. And while Dark Horse has been very slow in their release of these paperback editions, we are getting more in the near future, and it does seem like they plan on completely releasing the series in these 3-in-1 paperback editions. However, like we've seen from Blade of the Immortal, having the paperback omnibus editions does not necessarily mean that they won't do the hardcover editions, and I think that the artwork in this series is so deserving of the oversized pages, the oversized format, because of how amazingly detailed the material in Gantz is. Now, Gantz is a very action-packed series, very bloody, very gory, but it's one that is very fun, very fast-paced, and I, I really do believe that could do really well with these hardcover releases. And that brings me down to my number one choice, and at this point, if you don't guess what the number one is already, I don't know what to say, but I'm going with a series that was one of my personal favorites back when I was in middle school, and that is Trigun. Now, Trigun was never quite as popular in Japan as it was in the US, and I think that's thanks to the very Western setting that the series had, but it definitely made an impression on me back when I was in middle school when I first saw the anime. Of course, the anime never fully adapted the manga, and we have still not gotten any sort of like ultimate edition of the Trigun anime, which is kind of sad. But nonetheless, we have the entire manga printed in English. Now, Trigun, the original series, got two thick volumes, and I have the special Barnes & Noble hardcover editions of the first two volumes. And then after the original series, it did go into Trigun Maximum. Trigun Maximum, which was a 14-volume series, is more or less where the break happens from the anime, where the manga had kept on going and, and the anime no longer was adapting the manga. This ran for 14 volumes, like I mentioned before it had concluded, and we do have one more piece of material from Trigun that's available in the US, and that is Multiple Bullets, which is kind of a supplementary volume that contains a lot of short stories including one by the series creator, Yasuhiro Naito, but also a bunch of material from other creators like Boichi, who might be known from Dr. Stone or Sun Ken Rock. Now, after the original editions, they did come back and release a series of paperback omnibus editions for Trigun and Trigun Maximum. The original series was in one volume, while Trigun Maximum was collected across five volumes. The first four of those were three-in-ones, with the last volume only collecting two volumes. 
Now, I would love to see these get re-released in hardcover for many, many reasons. Of course, the common reason that it has with most of the series on this list is that this title has been long out of print in both the original editions and the omnibus editions and has become very hard to find. Number two, I think this would be a great time for them to add the multiple bullets volume in to the final omnibus edition so we can get all of this material in a great oversized as well. And finally, and for my opinion, the most important reason that I think this deserves to be recollected in these beautiful oversized editions is because Naito's artwork is so detailed and so hectic and so action-packed that it's one of those series that can sometimes be hard to translate because you get lost in the action. Your eyes get lost in what's going on, and many times while I was reading this series, I had to look for details to kind of search for exactly what was happening. And with the oversized pages, as large as they are in these hardcover editions, I think that this is the perfect way to read this series, really comprehend what is happening in all of these sequences. And that sounds like kind of backhanded compliments for the series, but I will be honest, as much as I enjoyed it, I did have to reread multiple action scenes multiple times before I really got what was going on. But I, I think that we all know at least one series that has a similar problem. So with that, that's my list of 10 plus honorable mentions manga that I think Dark Horse should be giving the deluxe hardcover treatment to. If you agree with any of these or all of these, let me know down in the comments below. If you have other Dark Horse series that you would like to see get the hardcover treatment, let me know in the comments what you would pick. How would you put them together? How many volumes would it take? What do you think about what I said and what are your opinions? I really want to know. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for spending the time with me. Please like the video, comment, subscribe, and share it with all your friends. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.